welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. What an exciting month this is. <laughs> I hope that you all fared well with the 555 and full moon activations last weekend. Uh, that was that was very very exciting and as you can tell the month of May is rolling along as anticipated and predicted um, a very busy month energetically a lot of radical change occurring and I, I'm gonna get into how it affects the collective consciousness and ourselves as light workers in a bit but if you've been awake and on this ascension path for a while, you're probably experiencing that moment before it all changed energy. Along with the challenges of, am I ready? Have I prepared enough? And all that anxious urgency of pay attention, pay attention. Now, ironically, all of this anxiety and excitement is paired with a deep inner calm that everything is going to be just fine and indeed all is well. But it's also about action and does take uh, some work on our part to not just balance the energies, but to understand what's going on because clarity is, is extremely helpful. And especially for those of us who have made the conscious choice and those those pre-agreements before we incarnated to be in this collective of folks that are kind of stepping up to the plate first we just want to be conscious that we are keep not just keeping up with it because you can't possibly not keep up with it you just have to choose as to what level of activation you want to kind of be on this month and if you're getting that urgent pay attention kind of anxious excited energy um, it should be and it just from my perspective it should be paired with that deep inner knowing that this is exactly what we've been talking about for years and here we are and it's about to become very evident to the the general population. So if you're if you're getting that dichotomy, um, it's a beautiful combination, and that is exactly what we want to be um, experiencing right now. If we're uh, if we're in that that kind of I don't want to say first wave because that's been used by so many other people. Um, if we're in that that group that has made that collective choice to say, yep, yep, I'm ready. I am ready. I'm ready to step up. And I I'm, I'm understand what's happening. And it's not a matter of stepping out without knowing what I'm doing. It's a matter of this deep surrender and trust that I'll, I'll get into in a minute. Now, this eclipse that's coming up is an annular eclipse, not annual, but annular eclipse, where the moon gets between us and the sun and creates what they call the ring of fire. It looks like the, it's like a big black disc where the moon is, and then you get the big ring of fire around it from the sun. And it looks really cool. And the path of this is arcing from uh, all the way over in, I think it starts in Indonesia and goes over Tokyo and then comes all around and all the way over to the US arcing over the Pacific. And the path goes through um, Redding, which is which is right next to Mount Shasta. And uh, when it when it aligns, this this eclipse is special, and it's special because for once every twenty six thousand years, we have the cycle where this eclipse also aligns with the Pleiades. And the Pleiades, if you're if you're familiar with Pleiadian uh, history at all, the Pleiadians have more genetic material on this planet than anybody else. So we have a good connection with the Pleiadians. 
And the Pleiadians are, are very potent guides through the shift in consciousness. And when we look at what's occurred every 26,000 years, that's a big marker for this kind of galactic cycle that we're, we're coming upon. And uh, it's kind of unique that it's occurring right over this Mount Shasta area, which is very associated with Ascended Master energies and teachings and ETs and inner earth families and fifth dimensional crystalline cities. And it's, uh, it's a very potent place. So there's a couple of events occurring in Mount Shasta uh, during the eclipse that weekend. And, uh, and I'm going to be there. I'm relocating to Mount Shasta, um, at least for the summertime. You know, we'll, we'll see what presents. But I'd like to be there. So we've got these events coming up with the eclipse. And then in June, we've got the Venus transit, which is another huge one. And then we've got the solstice at the end of June. And it's just now we're kind of getting into that one thing tumbling after the other. And it's, uh, it's, it's very unique. And if you take a look at it energetically, if you go within and just get in that heart space and, and take a look at what's occurring with this, you can feel that we're, we're about to hit a, a time. And I, I, hate to, <laughs> I hate to use the word time lately because it's, uh, it just seems so, um, it, it doesn't really describe what's occurring. So we're, we're getting into this, this period where many of these alignments or new moon, full moon, one thing after the other, and these, these little astrological things occurring are beginning to get so close together that they are starting to, to create a kind of um, chaotic, what they call chaotic nodes or chaotic states of a lot of change occurring in a, a short period of, of time. And it's exciting, but it also can cause some anxiety so let's let's get into the the light intel since there's a lot to cover before the eclipse. Okay. So first and foremost, we're into the fallout right now from a deep release of egoic density that occurred last week on the planet. Now this is a great gift. It really is. I know a lot of people are like it does not feel like a great gift. It feels like sadness and fear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as I mentioned last week, it's a well-timed marker with the 555 and the full moon intended to break that chokehold of fear, survival, greed, power, and, and those issues that the egoic structures have been using to keep us alive and on the planet for thousands of years. Now that the ego became uh, much more influential than it was, not that it was supposed to, because, you know, this is, this is something that we designed. But the ego uh, is, is difficult to bust apart. So when you get an energetic release on a, a vibrational level to break that apart, because we have, there's a lot of, of realignment and union going on with the, the chakras, getting into a different chakra system. And so the, the egoic level, that, that stuff in the, that lower three chakras of, of survival that we've been working with is being broken apart because new things have to come in and the ego has to start taking on a new job description to support what's occurring during the ascension, ascension process. And it used to be in charge and it used to be all about, you know, you have to win and you, you need this and don't do that. Don't, you know, it worked in, in conjunction with the, the mind and the emotions to create a state of survival because quite frankly, it, it became dangerous to be on, on the planet. And we all know that we all realize, you know, what has occurred, uh, with Mother Earth and, and with humanity. So there, there's no denying that that happened. But now that it's leaving, now that it's over, uh, we, our whole body 
and all of our energy bodies are getting this wicked adjustment that is getting, a, it's like a, these denser structures are getting a reset and it affects the physical, mental, emotional bodies with fatigue and confusion or sadness as the formerly comfortable state of habitual behaviors leaves our reality. So if you think about changing something that's been around for 26,000 years, again, this is you know, that marker again, this idea of survival because of our, our descended state of consciousness where we're experiencing the illusion of time and a very dense existence where everything is just slow and we think that cause and effect is real and we think that survival is our, our, our little avatar self down here is the only thing that we are and we start believing the lie and we're going to we're leaving all that behind and you can sense that it's kind of being dissolved completely like out of the akashic altogether just leaving us completely but our bodies even though the the mind and the emotional levels might be okay with like yeah i want to move forward i want to move forward the ego still thinks that it has to work as hard as it used to in order to keep us safe. And as we learn that it, that isn't true, we've been assisted now in this past week with that denser state of ego getting uh, busted apart. And it it feels strange because you get into the state of like a a non-identity crisis. It's like, okay, if I'm, if I'm not this person that I built myself up to be, or the way that I've been presenting myself, and some of us are just like, well, okay, that's, that's like the, the, the ego mind, the ego self, the presentational self, and now I'm transferring into my authentic self. And what am I going to do? Because it looks so different from what I was a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago. What are people going to think? You know, all the, all this egoic stuff. Of what are people going to think? What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? What about money? What about my home? You know, all this different stuff is being completely dissolved. And it's not it's not just being taken away, but it's just becoming un, a non-issue. And that's what we're moving into, where it's not a non-issue. Of course, the, the existence will take care of you. The universe will take care of you. The energy when you master it, will take care of you. And it's not a matter of perfection, it's a matter of surrender, which I'll, I'll get into in a second. But as these, these habits of survival start to break apart, it affects us physically, and, and sometimes you don't even know what it is that you're feeling. You're just feeling emotional, and it's all this, this egoic stuff of, I'm, you know, Am I, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I going to experience failure of some kind because I'm, I'm taking this risk? Or here's this, this old friend ego who's been taking care of me for twenty six thousand years is now going. I don't, I don't know what to do anymore. So, <laughs> I yourself, you're in charge. And there's a bit of an emotional release, and there's a bit of a, a mental release and a physical release of all of that. And it affects everybody in, in very different ways. So there is no no pat answer for how does it feel. But it may feel like sadness. It may feel like fear for a lot of people because they, again, to to abandon your identity and say, okay, you know what? I've I've released my my descended human template and I've taken on the new higher I am template that everyone's been talking about, you know, it's, it, we're taking on this new structure, higher levels take command, here I am, and wow, okay, this is not who I thought I was, and this is not what I thought I was going to be doing, and now I'm getting all these new skills, and what's, what's going to happen, and I'm not really, there, there is no um, looking into that, that future self, because it's so different and it's very in the moment so and, and we've been very attached to what I used to be and what I want to be and it's it's very in the moment now it's very present 
And that can create this kind of non-identity crisis where we are so unsure of exactly who we are that we have to be very flexible as this new higher authentic self steps in. And this is something that gets anchored during the eclipse. So you don't want to be clinging to something that's that's going away because it causes a lot of um, not just imbalance, but it could cause a lot of sadness and a lot of emotion that uh, you, you really don't need to cling to. So, all right, so let's get into this. What Now, what I love about this egoic change is the way that it brings everything we've been talking about for so long, front and center, learning who we truly are, releasing those survival constructs, facing our darkness, and loving it right into the light. This isn't about abandoning the darkness. This is about, ooh, okay, this is who I really am, and wow, that, that thing that I, I thought I cleared is still there. What's my last step? Here's your last step, ego. Ooh, okay, well, that's a tough one for a lot of people. And this is connecting us to an authentic life purpose rather than a life stream based on agendas of service to self constructs. The life path of conform, earn, buy, die, <laughs> you know, it's been very limited. Our, our experience has been very limited. And this is, this is absolutely not the moment to be thinking about who did it to whom and, and, and you know, who is responsible, etc. Et We're all responsible for ourselves all of those dark th constructs are leaving. They're being given a choice, you know, get step into integrity, step off the planet, <laughs> or, you know, step into a jail cell. So this is, that's just being taken care of. Unless you're on a mission of, of clemency or, or busting up the dark, uh, you, you don't have to worry about that. Let's not worry about that. Because that, that state of worry or blame or guilt about things that we've done or or uh, projecting some kind of payback scenario like they they should be doing this you this is not about the the external right now this is a very deep internal agenda that we have right now this is a very deep clearing and alignment for our true selves so if we can stop projecting into everything else that's around us, um, we'll be much better off as we work through this month. Now that said, it's not easy for anyone, rich or poor, to avoid the realization that their egoic levels demands have created a less than conscious life stream in the past. So it, it, again, there's there's no need to dwell on the past. This is that this time collapse is presenting this to us right now, right now. Who are you right now? What are you doing right now in the moment? What are your choices? What what's what are you experiencing? And it's still it still feel you know uh, some people can't handle anything more than just taking care of themselves, and that's fine. Whatever you have to do, that's fine. Don't feel guilty that I, I don't know what my mission is yet and I feel like I'm not helping. You know what? You are helping if you are getting into that state of facing whatever is underneath that mask, little Kachina. <laughs> mask soft Kachina. This is the time. You pull up the mask. What do you got under there? Because talk about revelation and no separation. This is authenticity across the board. This isn't revealing things about other people that have done other things and they're responsible. This is you, 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 you. Seems like service to self. So be it. Whatever you, whatever label you want to put on it. But this is service to your true self, which is completely different because that then affects the collective, affects the planet, gets you into that higher vibration. And as we zoom... Toward this major event this month, the energies are working overtime to get every awakened person clear of that old paradigm, hang, hang ups, you know, all those old habitual hang ups and ready 
to anchor our higher self into every particle of our being, this higher vibration will be sustainable in many light workers after the eclipse. So the wavering of what to do and when to do it and, and all of that will finally be over. It's a collective activation and it enables the support and guidance needed within these light workers to assist humanity as humanity encounters rapid change in the couple in the coming months. Now, if you volunteered to be one of the many stepping into the role of facilitation and guidance to assist humanity through this period, the egoic release is pushing you to surrender to the messages, the nudges, the dreams, the visions that you've been receiving. And it also means surrendering any need for external approval, support, signs, monetary gain, popularity, social status, any kind of status. It's pushing all of that away. So, and and you can sense it too if if you've still got and there's there's a little bit of um vibrational mismatch when it comes to people who are uh, experiencing that and st and starting to vibrate at that that higher rate and it seems like the tools that we're still utilizing to kind of get the word out and and spread some guidance um feel very limited and that but that's what we have to work with right now but it's uh i, I sense that that's going to be changing especially after solstice in June. I don't know why, but, but there it is. Okay. So this, this waiting game of when is it going to be clear to everyone? When are we going to get our new missions? When, you know, when, when, when? You, if, <laughs> brother, if you have signed up for this, this facilitation, this guidance, this, this first wave of, of activation, you are, you are feeling it. And the collective need for direction in the coming months is a priority. So co-creation replaces this my method, your method, my site, your site scenario. And compassion replaces all the payback scenarios completely. That, that whole idea of um, when are they going to be behind bars? Oh my God, let it go. Does it, does it really matter? Ideally. If, if the earth and humanity are ascending to a higher frequency and we're doing it and it's happening and people are stepping down, who, who cares if every last person on the planet doesn't, isn't accountable for something that occurred in the past? I really, I really feel it's important to kind of let that go. If people are doing things in the present, right in your presence, um, in your authenticity, you you need to say what what's on your mind in a kind and compassionate way, and kindly request that they stop. <laughs> but uh, but to look from um, to look at the external and and judge 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 uh, you're just okay so maybe maybe you're just in the wrong place okay you're just not in alignment with with um this eclipse thing that's going on and that's fine that's absolutely fine if you if you still feel like you want um some some payback scenario and you still want some galactic battle have at it the the galactic you know this galactic battle is ongoing and uh you know it ain't over till it's over but don't be surprised if all of a sudden things change so quickly that you're you're still uh, checking for the latest conversation about who's going to get what when um and the you come out and say yay i finally found out you know this guy's going to jail and the entire world has changed while you've been, you know, staring at the conspiracy site or whatever. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So enlightenment replaces 
awareness. Awareness is knowing something's up, and this sense of enlightenment is is seeing the, the huge picture, the complete picture, and feeling that, that, that that's that higher vibration, that fifth dimensional consciousness, that vibration within the heart replaces the I think something's up and, and it's getting replaced by not only I know something is up, but I understand my my role in it. I understand my collective self as well as my higher self. And then insight and that inner truth discernment, that knowing of what is occurring replaces the uh, tell me what's happening scenario. The I, I got to check, you know, the latest update, the latest channel or whatever. Tell me what's happening. Tell me what's happening. Um, you do, certainly don't want to be a slave to that scenario, especially in, gosh, from here on in, but especially this month, if if you're feeling anxious or sad or fearful or whatever, and, and the solar flares certainly always boost that a bit, um, I'm, I'm just suggesting, suggesting as an Ascension Counselor not to spend your time looking for the tell, tell me what's going on um, websites or, or you know, forecasts and predictions and, and things like that and make sure that that's not dominating your time. So if you, if you needed to split it up, I would say you know, 70% 70, 70 of your time you know, if you're really addicted and, and typically you spend, you know, 90% of your time looking for tell me what happened, tell me what's happening. And uh, I would I would reduce that to, you know, flip it, make it 10% of your time and uh, pay attention to to what's going on internally, because this is when your those activations are are really picking up. It's it's so it's so moment to moment over and over and over again. And we're about to witness our own visions manifested. Many things which the metaphysical, spiritual, shift consciousness community has known about for a very long time are about to become very evident and, and kind of revealed to the general public, if you, if you want to call us that, the general public as in people who just either haven't been paying attention or just have not had an awakening. Um, and again, that's a, that's a technical thing as well. You know, let's not say that the, the awakened are under the influence of blah, 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 or whatever. Um, and, and I do have a, a very brief ebook on my site called What is Happening to My Friend that explains why some people's DNA gets activated and why others do not. Now, the twists and turns of this kind of Deus Ex Machina of 2012 will get very fun to watch or witness. So brace yourself with a very happy, joyful heart. Please don't be fearful <laughs> about people are going to freak out or what. I mean, if you're if you're freaking out yourself um, about other people freaking out, then uh, what are you doing? Let's not feed that scenario at all. But let's approach this with gratitude because everyone is getting a few big surprises this summer. That includes light workers and way showers. Everybody's going to get some surprises. There are a lot of twists and plot turns and it's, it's going to be very interesting. So we need to surrender. And this is, this is this is vital to kind of maintaining a. It's it's kind of ironic maintaining a grip on your consciousness by surrendering, to your own consciousness. <laughs> it's staying open to the moment, willing to let go of the battle, whether it's internal struggle, ex struggles with the external world, struggles with the mirror, willing to say, all right show me everything 
Because surrender doesn't mean giving up. It doesn't mean giving up on the process, doing nothing. Surrender means, okay, show me. Here, here I am. I'm willing. Show me. Am I, have I, how, how am I doing? What, what do I need? What do I need, still need to learn? Because we'd never stop learning. So show me, what, what's the big thing? Okay, you know, something didn't feel right today. Something doesn't feel right right now. What, what, what's going on? Show me, surrender to it. It's like Christine Day has that great uh, Pleiadian metaphor of holding onto the branch of the tree. You know, we cling, 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 and there's that river of light, of flow, of the existence that supports us right just inches below our feet if we would just let go of the branch. But we're like, no, this is what I know, holding to the branch. You know, this, this is what makes me feel safe because I just don't know what will happen if I let go. So that's where the surrender is, kind of opening up the fingers and letting yourself get into that where it's like, okay, show me what you got, what you got, let's see, let's see what's going on. And we have to be flexible as our missions change. That means real, really trusting our higher self to lead us through the heart, not with the mind, not what we think we should do and maybe, and I want to save myself and I want to be protected by the planet, so I'm going to do what I think is noble. It's very ego-based. And since we are letting go of that scenario altogether, let's just be very flexible as these new ideas present as these new synchronicities align you know you never know what's what's going to occur when things pop up you're like hmm i was going to do that but look what has shown up you know it's not sticking to the old paradigm schedule of i i'm going to do this and then i'm going to do that i'm going to do that because that just gives us more oh the same so when we start getting a little unpredictable about our path, that's when new stuff can get in. And that's surrendering. Surrendering. It doesn't mean giving up. It means, okay, I'm exhausted today. Why do I keep thinking that I have to complete everything that I told everyone I was going to do or whatever? It's just moment to moment surrender. We need to lessen the egoic needs of perfection as well. The ideal ascension diet, body, practice, mission, relationship, group, method, whatever, is this, this perfect or else is a very fearful state. Let's just surrender. That hierarchy is not tolerated in the higher vibration because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't even make sense in a higher dimension in a higher vibrational state the idea of hierarchy and separation doesn't doesn't even make sense why why would you do that it doesn't make sense we are all one we're all source we're all working together we're all just experiencing this why why would i think that i have to be something that someone else told me i should be or why would i engage in a a fearful practice of you know, if you want to live forever, you're going to have to take, you know, 50,000 different supplements. And if you're not taking this, oh, my gosh. And, and this whole, like, radiation scare and, and all this stuff is uh, enough already. Okay? What, what are we? Who are you? You need to just be in your own truth. And if you're going to teach people how to take care of the body vehicle and support it during a transition. Wonderful. But don't base it around some kind of, of you know, take this or else kind of thing. And we're totally stepping out of that. And this is part of the whole revelation game is, is looking at that like, hmm, what, what exactly is going on there? Are we being of assistance or are we uh, threatening people that if they don't, do these certain things or certain activations, then mm, I don't know, you're on your own. <laughs> like, you might not ascend. I mean, everybody's ascending in their own perfect way. 
It's just a matter of choice as to what you want to experience. And if you're looking for some guidance on how to get through this a little bit easier, then surrender is definitely uh, one of my top recommendations. Is you got to, you know, look at it and see what what's going on. Do I need help with this? Why am I not accepting help? Why why am I still judging this or that part of myself? And this isn't something you have to experience alone. You know, you a lot of the things that we experience right now are this is this collective state of anxiety or collective state of of revelation. When a lot of people are pulling off the masks and going, wow, look at what I have created. Yikes, that is not what I intended at all. (laughs) Then that creates this vibration of, "Mm, I want to change, not really sure how to change. And and that's where we get into this, this state where surrender is, is key to um, just saying, okay, all right, gratitude. I asked for change. I wanted the world to change. I knew it had to start with me in order to change my reality and my experience in the world. I asked for it. Wham, here it is. Let's not even question why that stuff gets presented. Why? Why does it feel, why is it so challenging? Why is it, why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Well, you you asked for everything to be revealed. You want to change. And here it is. So let's just be in, in gratitude about that. No matter what. Because so so much has changed on this ascension timeline that we, there is no worrying about things any longer. That is a state of fear. And it's going away. And it's loosening its grip. But we have to be comfortable with letting it go. And willing to let it go. And that's where the surrender comes in. And you have to kind of take care Surrender to taking care of the pregnant self. You know, we're all birthing this this new self. And that takes nutrition, spirit, diet, water, rest, energy, exercise, moving when things feel like they're tightening up, rest when you're fatigued, knowing what's, what's best for you nutritionally. Um, you know, let's not be foolish about our diets, but let's not blame ourselves if we need to hunker down with some uh, organic fair trade chocolate. (laughs) Because we're just like, whoa, I am just freaking out. And okay. Um, But let's not, you know, just eat out of habit or or engage in stuff that just doesn't work anymore. And you're going to feel it. You're going to feel sad when you're doing things that feel habitual instead of um, in the moment and present and supportive of your body as it changes. But as we birth this this new higher self, it's going to ask for completely different things. So we just need to kind of pay attention and be connected to that same birthing process that Mother Earth is going through. And as Gaia starts uh, amplifying these energies that are coming in in order to assist us, to assist her. This is a, a nice exchange that's going on. Uh, we just want to be supportive of our bodies and and take care of it. Or it it will, the, the, the energies, if, if you don't, if, if you refuse to take care of yourself, if you refuse to change when everything in your intuitive state your higher levels, your guides, your dreams, your your hunches are saying, don't eat that ever again, or, or stop doing that, and you're just resisting that. You're like, no, one more time, one more time, and it, it, this is there is no one more time anymore. We're we're done. It's May 2012. This is this is the the month where everything starts getting sped up to the point where it just won't tolerate that that kind of behavior anymore again it's about choice so if you if you want to keep engaging in that kind of behavior um against your better judgment um don't just don't expect 
uh, really great results, you know, expect it to be challenging. And if you want the challenge, fine. That's fine. You know, you can you can be here in any state that you that you choose to be. Um, I'm as an ascension counselor. All I can do is make recommendations for raising your vibration as we go through this. And another part of surrender is surrendering to the activations. So these activations hit you in the thyroid first, that vagus nerve, the spine, the heart center. It feels like can feel like pulsing or tingling or th or throbbing like through through the the spine into into the legs the feet it can be buzzing dizziness is an indication that the energy bodies need alignment or attention you need some balancing the higher frequency plus balancing these intense magnetic changes is can be difficult on a body who has not known a anything else for 26,000 years this is this is you know we're coming up on this is evolution, and it can feel weird in the body, and that's why so many people are getting all kinds of crazy, well, supposedly uh, weird ailments that you know can be masked with drugs, etc. And if we are if we are truly awakened and and realize that these things are energetic adjustments, let's not medicate them whether it's prescription or alcohol or laziness or, or whatever, let's step into a, a little bit of higher vibrational knowledge and understand that when you're feeling dizzy or, or out of balance, that there, do some energy exercise, energy exercise, yoga, tai chi, qigong, what, whatever it is that balances you, walking in nature, lay on the grass but you got to move so when you, when you start getting tingling and and things like that in different parts of your body little sharp pains or or little dizzy spells um your your body is trying to adjust to major magnetic changes occurring on the planet right now and we're anticipating that the eclipse is going to actually dramatically increase those magnetic changes and just as the the planet has to balance that so must our bodies and it can make you feel disoriented so if you um you know if you if you go through some some yoga moves i'm not talking about like a whole hours worth of yoga which would be awesome for everybody but even if if you do 10 15 20 minutes in the morning even in lieu of a, a meditation some morning, instead of sitting still, let's do a moving meditation, a walking meditation, walk and breathe and walk through the woods or whatever you can do to try and balance and, and bring all of those energy bodies back into alignment so that everything that they're working on and getting pushed and shoved into um, starts not affecting the body in such a way where it's it's creating more of a challenge than is needed. How's that? And in order to receive these activations, not only do we have to balance the body as they come in, but you want to be in gratitude. You want to be in a state of gratitude for these things. And I said, wow, I said this weeks ago during one of my first programs that the people who, f who freak out about solar flares are, are are I'm sorry but you're you're behind <laughs> you're a little you're a little there a few a couple steps behind this the solar flares are not just it's not just activations but it's just a very limited way of thinking when you think oh oh my gosh an m class oh my gosh an x class i mean x class goes up to who knows how how high 26 something like that and it doesn't it doesn't matter that's the other thing in a state of surrender you realize that yes evolution is occurring and these magnetic changes are going to assist everything and yes it's going to affect my body and it might blow out my computer and oh my gosh my I mean my entire business is based on the internet 
And if the internet has to go down, so be it. What, what am I going to do? No, no, I'm going to be very fearful about the internet going down because, oh my gosh, I might miss out, miss out on, you know, one or, or five $99 sessions or whatever. Oh, come on. It's enough. You know, we, we can't, be in a state of trying to preserve everything just as it is and expecting and wanting change at the same time. We have to surrender to the change. Let it go. Let it be whatever it is. M-class flare, awesome. X-class flare, even better. Yes. Whatever needs to occur, whatever is happening is happening for huge galactic reasons. You know, so be it. We are just here to support and witness it as best we can. And when when it comes to activations and opening up with gratitude, whenever you see things things occurring or feeling anxious or weird or just freaked out, or or you, you'll get these this kind of bubbly excitement every once in a while, where like you you feel that revelations are so close now are, are are about to become so apparent to other people probably not everybody but but a larger part of the population and you get very excited about that 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 state of gratitude that that state of bubbly like yes 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 um can can kind of spin out of out of control sometimes and I'm not saying that we need to control our excitement, but um, you know, take a take a breath or two because you'll get yourself amped up, um, and you don't want to you don't want to lose it. We don't want we don't want people to to crack. And there's like two there's two ends of the spectrum of losing it. It's being in a really low vibration and getting brand new information, like like some people will be receiving in the next few months that they just cannot understand, can't get their head around it. And that they've they've been in this lower state of consciousness, and all of a sudden this high blast of revelation comes in, and it, they might lose it completely. Just like I don't understand, I have no reference point, completely just babbling. And then the other end is is so much anticipation and so much wanting and desiring change, and then when it starts happening being in like this over elated state of of yay they're finally the I'm like you know it's it's egoic it's egoic going oh yes they're finally going to know they're finally going to know and and kind of losing it on that end kind of losing your grip on your center that way and the 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 uh, there's a level beyond that too where um you can accept so many activations that um, your your consciousness starts to uh, your vibration starts to speed up to a point where it might feel like um, kind of like a, a spinning wheel just kind of going faster and faster and faster. It's kind of like a top that goes way too fast and it just kind of wants to explode. Um, that's that's fine to experience for for a moment or a flicker at a time, but uh, be careful <laughs> be careful I'm not saying that you have to tone it down but just be aware when um when your body is telling you hey 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 i i need to lay down you're just taking on way too many activations um so there's there's definitely a balance but everybody in their you know take their take your own path it it depends it's going to be interesting in the next few months because these uh the activations that are coming in and the energies that are coming in with this alignment is associated with that micro wormhole structure within the the crystalline structures which are in between the cells and i know that's that's kind of it's kind of a strange energetic to describe but the uh, i'll you know what i'll write an article about this because it's it's too, it's too hard to explain um, in in this show, so uh, or maybe I'll do a separate show on the micro wormholes altogether. Okay. Now we we might end up with this ecliptic, this eclipse alignment coming up um, on May twentieth. We may end up with more magnetic poles than just north and south. Everyone's been talking about 
pole shift and this might be it, this is the alignment that might actually flip things or move things. And when I think about the sun getting more magnetic poles and going from that uh, el that one elliptical uh, infinity symbol to two interlocked, just like the Earth with the whole rainbow bridge scenario and what Metatron has been talking about, about the, the those platinum elliptical bands around the planet, um, you know, one, one going kind of north and south and one going east and west just to use direction, but uh, it's not actually direction. When I think about increasing the number of magnetic poles, I, I understand why the energy in May feels so nutty. It's kind of like duality, which is north and south, um, getting an extra, an extra place to, to focus on, leading into triality and beyond. Um, this, the start of that structure might actually occur with that alignment, that 26,000 year alignment uh, with the Pleiades. And that will be um, very interesting. And when you think about that, if you can kind of feel into that, as far as your, your energetic structure within your own body, just like take a minute, put your hands together, put them against your heart center, you know, close your eyes and just kind of focus on the heart and feel, just imagine what it would be like to have, instead of just top and bottom, having uh, four or, or more magnetic points of reference in your body and you can kind of feel how that crystalline structure opens up to that it feels very supportive kind of like yep expansion and now your reference points are not so linear they're much more open and and magnetics has not been something that we've heard from a lot of uh channels we've we've heard a lot of changing magnetics in, in the planet and then we're matching the magnetics of the planet and all the emotional stuff is about magnetics but what if we end up with several points of reference just like the multi-dimensional self has many points of reference that'd be kind of interesting yeah so the, again surrender to what's ab about to occur all these things that we've been anticipating are are expanding it seems like so much more is possible and is is on and is in store for all of us that uh you know we can learn and experiment with balancing we can learn and experiment with possibilities in order to teach others because this this first group of us who have chosen guidance and facilitation and are now receiving brand new missions as, as this alignment approaches for different kinds of facilitation and the next step in guidance in order to help humanity that might have a hard time with these with, with the new paradigm pretty much with revelations this is this is not about where we're ascending and leaving and they're all left behind. I I, I don't feel that um, it's as cut and dry as that. I I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's going to be uh, quite a bit of overlap. But when when is it happening? Yeah, the whole scenario. Of when when right now today this this is it. The time collapse means that the illusion of a delay between our thoughts and the manifestation of those thoughts disappears. No more time lapse between I thought about something and then two days later or uh, we get to see that the illusion of time as it disappears we get to see the reality of instant manifestation. Exactly what we're creating, exactly what we have created becomes what we are creating, what you are creating in the moment, 
all the time. And if you're creating the same thing day after day, no change. How come? How come? It's because you've got the, the conscious and subconscious thoughts are creating something that maybe you don't desire, or maybe you do. Maybe you need to face that, that you actually do desire <laughs> procrastination or, or non-abundance or, or challenges. And that's fine. That's fine. Why should it be easy? This is evolution. Who could it be easy for? You know, they always say that it's it's going to be easier after this, after that. I don't see it being easy at all. Why would we have one instant wave of, of ease? If, if anything's going to become ease, it's going to be surrender. Surrender to the moment. That's when it gets easy. When you're just like, okay. You know, bring it. Okay, wh wh what do we have right now? This moment. What's going on? Wow, I'm getting hit by a flare. I need to lay down. Okay, that's your moment. Wow, I have a brand new idea and I'm called to do this thing or, or connect with that person. Okay. If you're still creating what you were doing the last hour, last day, last week, last month, last year, same thing, same thing, same thing, uh, you know, you're going to have to face that, you know, masks off, Kachina, this is revelation of all that we are and everything that we create all the time. The difficulty is the mirror showing you what you cannot, what, what can't come to a higher vibration. And it's, it's plain, we're going, okay, this is my process and it's going to be as slow or as fast as I want it to be. We're going to be very conscious of that and willing to let the old stuff go, let it go. The, there's madness. <laughs> madness, uh, madness abounds when people see the truth about what they really are, and assisting people to get through that that non-identity crisis of I don't even know who I am. I thought it was this, and I was identifying with that group, or I believe this, and. I, that, that was my world, and now I don't even know what the world is about. I'm not expecting um, huge revelations about intergalactic drama, uh, so let's not, let's not even go there. It's interesting, but we're dealing with what's happening right here, right now, with humanity and with the planet. I, I don't feel the, the need to explain every inch of, of the galactic drama with people. Um, it's, it's interesting and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of clemency as well. So uh, I think we need to step out of that for now and, and just start preparing to be the, the light workers that assist when humanity starts experiencing things that they have never experienced before. When we talk about even the simplest of things, it's the, the easiest thing you could help someone with, a financial collapse. Easy. <laughs> and everyone's very concerned about that. They're like, oh, what about the, the financial collapse? It's, it's going to do this, it's going to that, do that. Um, yeah, okay, that's just money. Does everyone realize that it's just money? They're like, well, money is money is our whole life. What about this? Money is food and shelter and everything. Yeah, but there's also abundance in the world. And there is also no limit to our consciousness. So why why even be concerned about that? It will be fun and interesting to see what occurs when that happens and the I know that everyone is sensing that the financial thing is going to happen very soon and that's it's really not something to worry about the the only thing that we should be focused on if you want to focus on anything is uh, is making sure that you are stepping into your authenticity without the ego, without the old ego, I should say, letting all that density die away, let it go, and then saying, okay, what, what can I do to help? 
because I'm in a state where I'm, I'm able to help. You know, if, if you've already helped yourself, okay, and you're, you're in a state where you understand what's going on, you understand who you really are, you're surrendering to what's going on, you're surrendering to the moment, and you're surrendering to assistance. And that sense of mission that everyone has pursued and wanted becomes right, whatever's right in front of you. And I do feel that as these, these old paradigm structures crumble, fall apart, transform, even though there's a, a lot of people assisting on the inside with that, is still very much up to us as to how we deal with that. And coming from a state of a nice, clear, new paradigm ego that's in, in service to others from the authentic self, from the power of your own true self, is going to be extremely helpful in helping people right in your neighborhood, right in your town, and then collectively, as we, as we move through this, to uh, restructure our world and our communities in a way that honors everybody and empowers everybody. And it's going to be good. And there's going to be a lot of surprises, which is very exciting. And we just want to remain flexible, as flexible as we can during this time. I hope this... <laughs> I hope the show has been helpful, and I hope I actually accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with this broadcast about surrender and about the upcoming uh, energies and, and how to deal with this one moment at a time, one day at a time, and being flexible and, and not just looking for the synchronicities, but allowing them to occur by not being so rigid about uh, what I have to do, what I should do, what I said I was going to do. Be right there in the moment. This is all the, the training and workshops and everything that you've been to to get you to this point. It's, it's application time, and it, it's time to be uh, very good to oneself in order to be very good to the collective and very good to the planet. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful week. I am on my way to Mount Shasta uh, via car vehicle, and I'm going to be traveling and arriving uh, next Thursday in Mount Shasta. So if you happen to be listening from Mount Shasta, um, go to my website and send me an email because I would love to get together with people immediately. Um, I'll be working a couple of events on the Eclipse weekend, but I'm leaving it very flexible for what might occur. Higher realms are in charge. So, uh, and that's, that's the best guidance I can give is, uh, even if you're not attending an event, you certainly don't have to be in Mount Shasta or, or in any of the places that um, the, the Eclipse is, is happening right over that. Um, but uh, you might want to pay attention, you know, follow your guidance and see, see what's going on. Um, the, I sense that the 20th and the 21st are going to be, um, transformative, which is interesting. And, uh, but there, there is no waiting, you know, today is transformative. This moment is transformative. If you're listening to the on-demand replay of, of this episode right now, 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 now is transformative. We are deep into the shift right now and we're getting a big acceleration. So have fun with it and surrender and open up that, that heart space with some gratitude that it's finally, finally here. And it's, it's this beautiful, joyous time and you can laugh as you cry <laughs> through these adjustments and, and difficulties and confusion, all of that. It's fine. All is 
well. Just participate in your own evolution. Make sure that you're present with your own consciousness. And have a good time with it. Enjoy it. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, if you would like to know more about me or my services, which are in a big <laughs> sense of flux, uh, you can visit me on the web. And there's uh, my, my tagline and the description for the program has my website on there. Uh, I love to assist. And I offer inexpensive one-on-one -on -one sessions if you want to have a conversation. I'll be available for the next two days, and then I am on the road and unavailable until after the eclipse. So uh, you can certainly get a session in in the next couple of days. And I wish all of you a beautiful and creative week, a couple of weeks. I'm not sure when the next show is going to be. We're going to leave it flexible and see what happens. Everything's changing. And uh, have a great time. Drop me an email. Talk to me. I'm on Twitter. Let's connect. It's a beautiful time to connect with people. I love you all. Have a beautiful day. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.